This evening, I want to share with you about the love of God, God's love. So I'm just going to read from just one verse, which everybody knows. All right? All right? Yeah. John 3, 16. <laughs> God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. So God so loved the world. This is a verse we all know and we know the 17 as well. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. So God is not condemning anyone. He is stretching out his hand, his hand of love to us. Amen. We are not condemned. And he is not condemning us now. But we will be condemned uh, if you don't believe in him. You will be condemned. You know, my wife is a lawyer and once she was doing a case with my, my father and my assistant, they were defending this guy, or they had something to do with this guy, and I kept on asking her every time, you know, they came from court, what's happening to this guy? Apparently, he had killed somebody. And so what's happening to the guy? What's happening to the guy? Is he, is he free? Is he, is he going home? Is he going to be set free? And it was like he was free for the time being until the end of the case. And at the end of the case, he was condemned. And he was sentenced to death. But all through the case, he was not condemned till a particular day came. And then he was condemned. So then the Bible says in John 3, 18, it says, he that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. So there is condemnation when you do not believe. You are condemned. Okay? That's the Bible. I didn't write the Bible, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you want to be angry, be angry with the Bible. And be angry with Jesus. But leave me out of it. <laughs> Verse 19. Verse 19. This is the condemnation. That light is come into the world. And men loved darkness. Rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. So God. Really loves us. So let's look at John 3.16. God so loved the world um, that he gave. So when you love, you give. So God is the greatest person ever to love. And I know that girls like big, great people. Great people. So the greatest person loves you. Many ladies would like to marry the prince. The prince or the king or somebody great. The greater the person, the better. Usually. That's simple, simple logic, but it's not so really. And, but this time, the greatest person ever, God himself, loves you. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Like God himself loves you. So God so loved. Now, God loved you with the greatest love of all. There's no greater love than this love. Okay? Now today we have people say, I love you. I love you, baby. I'll die for you, baby. <laughs> I'll cross the desert to bring you an ice cream. <laughs>
Someone said to a girl, you've blocked my view. It means I can't see any other girl. Wow. You've blocked my view. <laughs> Someone said to the girl, were you created or were you crafted? Wow. Now, God's love is not the love of words. Amen. God's love is real love. Amen. Real love. And God loves us with real love. Now, what did he do to show his love? That he gave his only begotten son. Okay? Because love gives. So, when I said to my wife, I love you, and I will, I want to, I, I gave her my, I gave her myself and my name. Yeah. She's had my name for 30 years. That's how much I loved her. <laughs> yeah. I could have kept my name. <laughs> I gave her my name. And she's had my name for all these years. Can you imagine sharing your name with somebody? So, but God didn't just give us a name. He gave his only son. Wow. And he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So, why was God loving us so much? He was loving us so much because he, he cared so much about us and that he didn't want us to perish. All right? And so because of that, he gave his only son so that we would not perish but have everlasting life. So what exactly does it mean to perish? All right? What was he saving us from? And in Luke chapter 16, we see the only account I know of, credible account, of what it means to perish. In Luke chapter 16 and verse 19, Jesus said, these are the words of the same Jesus. He said, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. Wow. This man was eating Rockhampton beef <laughs> every day. Hey. <laughs> he was eating shrimps. He was eating fish. He was eating chicken. He fed sumptuously every day. And he was clothed in purple. That was his special color. You know, some of you wear different colors, but this rich man was wearing purple every day. Purple is the color of riches. Wow. And he was clothed in purple and fine linen. He didn't buy clothes, buy one, get three free. <laughs> he didn't buy clothes in packs. He had special shops for his clothes. Very expensive. You know, I don't know how much his clothes cost, but it must have been very expensive. And the Bible says he fed sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at the gate of the rich man. So there was one man inside and one outside, full of sores. Now, the poor man, Lazarus, was desiring to be fed from the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Now, the rich man didn't eat, you know, everything because there was so much. So, the, lit, the crumbs and the remainders that would fall from his table were, were gathered and they would throw them over the wall or sometimes when he was driving out, they would just 
take a paper basket and just throw it to the poor man. And the poor man was reaching out for all the food and the leftovers that were coming from the rich man. So he had strategically positioned himself at the gate of the rich man. Wow. And that's wise. That's clever. Today, you have poor people positioning themselves at traffic lights. I don't know about here. Traffic lights and places where people stop. And then as soon as you stop, they come and they start begging. In many, in many countries, there's things like that. So, this poor man was well positioned. Now, the Bible says, moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Now, he couldn't afford the expensive Australian hospitals. So, dogs were his nurses. All right? So, every morning, when the sores would have this exudate, you understand what an exudate is? It's, it, this, this is probably what we call a buruli ulcer. It's like an ulcer. It's, it's a whole skin comes off. And, you know, every day there's ex, exudate, sometimes reddish, yellowish, pus, and all kinds of liquids come out every day. Okay? Are you with me? These are real conditions. I'm telling you, I'm a medical doctor and I've seen these kind of sores. They don't, they don't easily get cured. You can give all kinds of antibiotics and there are sores that do not go and they really smell. You can have a whole world full of people with these kind of sores. So, every day, the Bible says, the dogs came and licked his sores. So, he would be asleep, you know, uh, outside the gate of the, rich, of the rich man, you know, and then he would, he would wake up in the morning and he'd say, oh! Oh! and he'd find a brown dog, a little black dog, <laughs> black and white dogs, big ones, small ones. They were all licking his sores and he would be kicking them off, you know, because they, they would love every, every morning this wonderful exudate you know, was exuding from the sores and was coming out of the, of the poor man's sores every day. And so it was a wonderful meal for these dogs every day. Are, are you understanding what I'm talking about? Okay. <laughs> now, it came to pass that the, the beggar died. Now, and the Bible tells us exactly what happened to the beggar when he died. Listen carefully. The Bible says, and the beggar died, right? So he was probably, you know, he probably had a bite from one of the dogs who was licking him every day. So probably one of them bit a piece because it was so delicious and it was like, can we have some more? Then they end up biting a piece of meat. All right. And so the, the beggar, the beggar probably developed what we call an infection, septicemia, infection spread through the blood. And he was probably shivering, you know, having a fever. And he was lying down. Maybe it was cold, maybe it was hot. And he was struggling. And then eventually, you know, after eating the last meal, his heart gave up and he died. <laughs> now, the Bible says, when he died, you know, you know, when you die, as soon as you die, you get up. Yes. Some of you may have watched the film Ghost. Something like that. He died... And then he, he, he got up because the Bible says that angels came to escort him. So as soon as he, he, got, he got up, there he was standing there and his body was lying there. And then angels came. Why would angels have to come? Because there are so many evil spirits and demons all around. If they don't come to take you and to escort you, the demons will take you. Yes. So the Bible says that the angels came and carried him 
into Abraham's bosom. So he was escorted. And he was, bye. Bye Bye-bye world. And the angels took him and left his wretched body on the floor. And they probably carried him away and buried him in a mass grave. Now, the rich man also died. This is the only account of exactly what happens after you die. Because I know we, we all have relatives and friends who are dead. But what happened when they died? Yeah. Now, the rich man also was having a lot of fun. He had many girlfriends. One was called Rose. One was called Lucy. One was called um, Sheila. (laughs) He had many, many girlfriends. He had tall girlfriends. He had short girlfriends. He had plump ones. Slim ones. He was drinking all the time. Ha! Smoking. He was having a great time. He was dancing in the clubs. Whoa! I mean, his, his girlfriends all around him was taking drugs. He was having fun, sex, fooling. He said there was no God. He said there's, not, there's nothing like God. Church, man, he sleeps on Sundays. Church, you must be joking. All these pastors are just looking for money. That's the kind of thing he used to say. The rich man. You have not heard them talking before? Rich people, when they talk about God and the church and the pastor. So all those guys are just looking for money. They're just vampires trying to rape the poor people. And take all, all their money and make themselves rich. Hey. So one day he was having a drink and he said, I feel something in my chest. <laughs> Somebody get me some water. The rich man was dead. Hey. Now, the rich man, look carefully, you see that this time there were no angels. When he died, no angels came for him. Yes. No angel appeared. In fact, the Bible says in Isaiah 5, Hell from beneath is moved to meet thee at thy coming. Yeah. No angel. So now he, he got up and there was his body lying there. And he said, ah, you know what? I hear when people die, they are shocked. They can't believe they are dead. They talked. Why can't anybody see me? Why can't anybody? No one's responding. And his body was lying there. So now the rich man was taken directly, no angels involved. He was taken directly into hell. Hell is real. Whether some people mention it or not, I don't know. (laughs) But Jesus mentioned it. Jesus spoke about hell. And God so loved the world that he gave his son. He loves us so much. This is love. That he loved us and he gave his son that we would not perish or be destroyed in hell. Now the Bible says in hell, he lifted up his eyes. Eyes? Eyes. Being in torments and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So it looks like when you die, you still have eyes. Yes, you still have eyes. Because he was in hell and he had eyes. Look at it. In hell he lifted up his eyes. Being in torments. And he still had feelings. Because he was tormented. So he was in torments. He was in pain. 
<laughs> you know, and when you are in pain, yeah, you make certain sounds. You say things. You scream. That's what the Bible calls weeping and gnashing and wailing. Oh, and he was, he, was, he was in torment. Oh, oh. You know, when my wife was going to have a baby. <laughs> she was in labor. She started speaking French. <laughs> you know, and I told her, you are not yet in pain. Because if you are in pain, you won't speak French. You speak another language. <laughs> French is the language for love. <laughs> So the rich man was tormented and he was in pain and he lifted up his eyes. So his eyes, eyes are in the head. You don't have eyes just floating around in the, in the sky. Like that. The two eyes. No, the eyes are in the head and the head is on the neck. Yeah. So he lifted his eyes and he seeth Abraham. He recognized him and he saw Lazarus. He said, wow, Lazarus, what are you doing there? I don't know how he was able to see that far. Hey. And he cried. He cried. So he still had his voice, his vocal cords. So you can see the neck must be there. He cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Wow. Mercy on you? Huh. And send Lazarus. Now you see rich people are used to sending people around. <laughs> hey, come here. Hey, open the gate. Hey, bring me something. Uh, bring some drink. Do this. Do that. Hey, hello. Uh, tell uh, Mr. So-and-so to come and see me right away. Send him. T-. They are used to sending people. So this rich man went into hell and he thought he was still a rich man. <laughs> he, still, he thought he was still the boss to send people around. So he said, send Lazarus. Send Lazarus. But you see, he didn't realize that circumstances had completely changed. Everything was completely different. The Bible says the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Hey! So send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water. Now you see, so Lazarus had a finger still. And you don't have fingers floating around in the air. The finger is connected to the hand. The hand is connected to the arm. Arm is connected to the upper arm. Upper arm is connected to the body. So, so, so you see he's describing a, a, a body, a human being. Exactly. So you continue to exist. And you are, that's what the Bible describes as the inner man or the hidden man. There is a real man in you who will continue to exist and to live after this life. Now, you better listen because for all the books in the world, it's only the Bible. It's only the Bible which tells us exactly what happens to you after you die. No one has the explanation. All the books I studied in medical school, anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, ophthalmology, surgery, internal medicine, gynecology, I mean psychiatry, not pathology, none of them tells you what happens after you die. But the Bible tells us what happens after. Yes, after you die. So he said, tell him to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. I'm tormented in this flame. Hey! Now, in all my life, I have never gone to someone's house and said, I'm thirsty. Can you give me, can you dip your finger in water? <laughs> Just a drop. You know, you ask for a bottle or a glass. Of water. You don't ask for. 
just one drop like that. No. But I tell you, there is a place. There is a place. They don't ask for glass. They don't ask for a bottle. They just want a drop. Just one drop. Just a drop. I tell you, it's real. You guys, you see, Christianity is about faith. It's about believing. Either you believe or you don't believe. And you, you stand to, to, to <laughs> if you die and it's real, <laughs> maybe you are in serious trouble. I tell you. Yes. And if you die and it's not real, then at least. But if you die and it's true, my goodness. There is a place they are not asking. They are not asking for Coke. So, I don't like Coke. I want, I want a, a, a Diet Coke. What do you call it? Uh, uh, Diet Coke, Pepsi, Zero Coke, uh, Fanta. I mean, you are so choosy. Ask, I want Sprite. I want this. I want juice. I want that. I want... Hey! Look, there is a place. <laughs> they just ask you for one drop of water. One drop of water. Yes. They're looking for one drop. Yeah. <laughs> There's a place like that. There's a place like that. There's a place like that. So there's, a, there's a real place. So I dip the tip of my finger in water. Wow. For I am tormented in this flame. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, send him. But Abraham said, Son, remember. So your mind is going to be working. Yeah. You see, everything is working. Remember, your memory will be active. You can't say, I have Alzheimer's. No way. Alzheimer's, dementia, nothing is going to be working. You are healed and you'll be in hell. Your, your mind is going to be active. Yeah. Yeah. Your mind will be working. You not say, I, I can't remember. You remember. Remember. You remember. Yeah. You remember. You remember today. You remember me. You remember me lying down here. You remember me talking. You remember me preaching. You remember me waving this bottle of water. You remember the one little drop. You remember everything. He said, remember, son, remember. Son, remember. Girl, remember. You remember that guy who was preaching? You remember what you said? You remember your comments? You remember the comments you made? You remember the things you said? You remember how you criticized? You remember, son, remember that in thy lifetime thou receivest thy good things and likewise Lazarus' evil things. But now he is comforted. And thou art tormented. Hey. Now, let's carry on. And besides all this, I'm just reading a verse to you. I hope you notice. I hope you notice I'm just reading the Bible to you. Yes. And besides all this, between us and you, okay, there is a great gulf fixed. There is a fixed space. Such that they that will pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass from us that would come from thence. So, there is a huge gulf fixed. There are no flights. No roads. No bridges. I have news for you. If you want to go to heaven, there is a way you can go to heaven directly from Rockhampton straight to heaven or directly flights directly from Rockhampton to hell so there's two ways but once you get into heaven there's no flight from heaven out into hell or flight from hell to heaven so it's either from here straight to heaven from here straight to hell but once you get into either chamber you can't cross over Yes, you are stuck. You are stuck. You are lost forever. Yes, you can't come back. You know, that's how death is. And that's why God loved us so much. He could see what was going to happen to us. 
He could see, he could see. I mean, you can see. We are liars, we are thieves, we are wicked, we are deceptive, we are evil. I mean, Jesus said to his disciples one time, they were, they were, they were asking him about prayer, and he just told them, you being evil, you know how to give good gifts. In other words, human beings are evil. We are evil. There's a lot of, after devils, the next group of evil people are human beings. We are just next to devils in, in terms of level of evil that we have in this world. Yes, look around and you see. Yeah. So, now, this man is stuck. Now listen to what happens. I want you to listen carefully. Verse 27. Then he said, I pray thee, that thou wouldest send him. He was so much into this sending thing. He was like a rich man, so he was... He's used to sending people. So he, he now he said, send him to bring me water. And uh, Abraham said no. And by the way, if, when you get into hell, every question you ask, the answer is no. Wow. <laughs> Anything you ask for, the answer is no. Can I have tea? No. Can I have water? No. Can I transfer? No. Can I have this? No. Everything is no. <laughs> so now Abraham, he said to Abraham, send Lazarus To my father's house. Okay. Why? Verse 28. Because I have five brethren. They are just like me. Just like me. I know know they are going to come. Lest they also come into this place of torment. Now this man was now more evangelistic. He was into sending missionaries now. (laughs) Yes. He wanted to send missionaries. He was more missionary minded than many pastors today. Yes. He wanted to save people's life. Can you imagine this rich man did not ask about his property. Oh, I want to send somebody to check on my property, my will, my insurance, my life insurance. No, no. No, no. When you go to hell, you will not be thinking about your property on this earth. What I have, my house, my wife, my children. He was now thinking about the possibility of someone else coming to this place. I have five brethren. You know, sometimes we wish some of our church members would go to hell and come back. So that they will become more missionary minded. And evangelistic minded. Because if we had at least two or three people who have gone and come back, they would really support the work. <laughs> there would be no you know, begging for money. He was, now, he was now sending people. He was sending Lazarus on a mission. Go, go, go and speak. Let Lazarus go and tell and warn these guys. Wow. Lest they also come to this place of torment. Verse 29. Thank you, Lord, I will say it. And Abraham said to them, they, no, no. Abraham said to them, they have Moses and the prophets. So you see me, I'm here now. I'm a prophet. This is a prophecy. This is a real prophecy. Jesus is the greatest of all the Jewish prophets. There's Ezekiel, there's Isaiah, there's Jeremiah. But the greatest prophet of all was Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He's the most famous Jew that ever lived. And he prophesied and he's telling us what happens to people when they die. And this is a prophecy. It will happen to everyone here one day. It's just a matter of time. In fact, in about 50 years, most of us here will not even be around. You can check your age, calculate your age and see. 50 plus your age. This is um, arithmetic. You can do it now. (laughs) There'll be another group of people here. Yes. Now, he said they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. So this means that true prophets are supposed to tell people about hell. If you are a real prophet, you're supposed to tell people about this. Is it not amazing that today people are just talking about how to have a good life, how to be happy, how can things work out well, how to be rich, how to make your first million? How can things, you know, have a good marriage, have good children? But no one is talking about the reality of heaven and hell. But he said they have Moses and they have the prophets. So I challenge you, if you are a prophet, 
And if you are a representative of God, let people hear about these realities. And then he was arguing. He said in verse 30, and he said, nay, Father Abraham. I think this may be the reason why this man went to hell. Yes, because he was saying no to, 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 to Abraham. Yes, nay, Father Abraham. How can you say no? Even when you are in hell, you are still saying no. How, how can you argue? You, there are people who argue with everything. This man is in hell. He is arguing with Father Abraham who is on the other side. How are you always arguing about everything? When will you stop being stubborn? Nay, Father Abraham. He was arguing with Abraham about the method of evangelism. Uh, don't, don't send this, send this. Do this, do that. He said, nay, Father Abraham. If one went to them from the dead, they will repent. And verse 31. And he said, no. If they hear not Moses and the prophets, they will not be persuaded. Though one rise from the dead. So if I stood here and I told you, I died four years ago. I was in the mortuary and I was buried and I rose from the dead after six weeks. And I'm here to tell you that it's real. You will all laugh and say it's not true. You won't believe. You won't believe if someone rises from the dead. You, yes. And so you, you won't believe if someone rises from the dead. Then if I preach, you, you have to believe. Yes. Because you, nothing is going to make you believe unless you believe the preaching. Yeah. So today, we see the love of God. I mean, this is the greatest love. He just saw us, we were failing. And he, he can see that we are just going, this is where we are headed. And he says, I'm going to try and help. When my son was in uh, primary school, you know, one day I, I asked him some questions, you know, because the exam was coming. Big exam, the main exam, that makes him go to another school. I, I, I asked him some questions and I realized he didn't know anything. Hey. And I saw this boy is failing. So you know what I did? I decided to study with him. And I would wake up in the night and wake him up and he'd be sleeping and I'd, hey, wake up, wake up. And we would study the longest river, the this, enzymes, everything, biology. And I'll go through the questions with him because I could see he was failing. And I could see he wouldn't pass the exam. So I decided to fight with him to try to rescue him. And I, 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 I fought with him and I studied with him. And he passed his exam. And he went to the next. Today he's a doctor. Yes. But I could see that he was failing. You see, God can see that we are failing. He can see. He can see we're going down. And he decided to intervene. And he decided to step in. And help us. And do something to rescue his own children that he loved so much. Yes. He could see that we were going into hell. Into fire. And there will be no way out. Because, you know, the devil is always accusing God. That if you throw me into hell for disobedience. And if you throw me into hell for rebellion. You have to throw them also into hell for doing the same thing. Yes. So today... I'm preaching to you about the love of God. How many can feel the love of God? The love of God. Wow. Love. This is the love of Jesus. He's so kind. You know. Someone who really cares about us. And, and this is his love for the whole world. Jesus didn't come to give, make us millionaires. Jesus didn't come to build houses for us. How long are we going to live? How long are you going to be here? It's just a matter of time. You're going to be out of this world. In the flash, in the, in the twinkle of an eye, you're not going to be living on this earth. I mean, can't you think? Can't you see? You know? God has given us brains to think. He, he wants us to be wiser. Wiser, because we have such huge brains compared with the size of a, chicken, a brain of a chicken. Your brain is so much bigger. You imagine the chicken's head is so small and the brain is inside the head. It's very small. He, can't, he doesn't know what is happening. You know the story of the chickens who were happily living together and then there was this farmer who was a Christian and he used to come and feed the chickens every day and give them vitamins and food and all that. And the chickens were, were so happy. 
And they were saying, you know, this farmer is really a loving farmer. He's the nicest we've ever seen. You know, he's so kind. You get it? Are you with me? Yeah. And then one of the chickens escaped and went to town. And when he went to town, he saw KFC. <laughs> what? <laughs> KFC, Nando's. Chicken. Chicken. Chicken, uh, uh, what do you call it? Drumsticks. <laughs> Chicken wings. Wow. And he came back to tell the other chickens, listen, this is not love. They are, we, <laughs> these guys don't really love us. I saw our body parts for sale. Our body parts are for sale. Can you believe our body parts are advertised? The thumb, the, the, the thighs, the, 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 and they are spiced up. Hey. You know, chickens, they, and no one, this chicken who came back as an evangelist to the other chickens, <laughs> no one believed the chicken. <laughs> they didn't believe it. They said, it's not true, it's not true. This is a good man. He's feeding us, he loves us. He's been loving us since we were born. He even brought a vet to come and look after us and give us medicine. And they didn't believe. And that's how we human beings behave. Somebody's come back to tell. This is what happens after. So, oh, no, it's not true. No, this is what's going to happen later. Believe. No, it's not true. No. No. But today, you know, this is to me, I, I wonder what other reason there is for us existing as Christians than to tell people about Jesus and to spread the good news that Jesus died for us, and that we will not and do not have to go to hell. That all we have to do is to receive him and to believe in him. You know, in closing, I want to tell you a story, a true story, of something that happened to an Assemblies of God pastor. This Assemblies of God pastor, I don't know which country, it may, may even be Australia, I don't know. But I think it was America. He was invited to preach like I'm preaching here. And he finished preaching in his friend's church on Sunday night. Uh, I don't know what he preached about. <laughs> but on Sunday evening, when he got into his hotel room and closed the door, Jesus appeared to him in the room. And you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, follow me, follow me. I want to show you something. So Jesus took him down, down into hell. Now this Assemblies of God pastor was amazed when he saw hell. People wailing, screaming, shouting, dying, crying, weeping. Help me. People suffering. I hear there's a special place for those who don't believe in God and for those who don't believe in the devil. The devil says he likes to have them, those who didn't believe that he's real. Now, as they were going, suddenly they came across a young man, a man. You know who this man was? This man, this Assemblies of God pastor, had been in a secular university, and that was his roommate. He actually got converted and came back to the Lord, seriously back into the Lord, in university. And so he came out and went to Assemblies of God Bible School. And that's how he came, he entered into the ministry. So that was his roommate when he was, in, he was in school. And when he saw his roommate, he said, what? What are you doing here? You know what his roommate told him? It's, remember, it's Sunday. It's Sunday, Sunday evening. His roommate told him there was an automobile accident on Friday. And I came here on Friday. I've been here since Friday. And he said, How? And then the Lord said, come, let's go. And took him back said, I wanted you to see this. So that was Sunday night. Now, he immediately wanted to call his mother because his mother knew his roommate. This is a true story. His mother knew his roommate. And his mother knew his roommate because she used to visit the two of them in school. You know how your mother can visit you and your roommate is there. So it's like your mother gets to know the other people. 
So it, it was so late on Sunday night that he couldn't call his mother. So he decided to call his mom on, 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 on Monday. So Monday he called his mom, Mommy, how are you? All right, fine. He was just talking. Then suddenly she said, Have you heard? So heard what? You know, your roommate, there was a terrible car crash on Friday. He started to shake. His mother told him, said there was a crash on Friday. And he had been in hell on Sunday and met this boy, this guy, there. And this man said to her, I came here on Friday. There was an accident. I came here on Friday. He was shaken. And the Lord was showing him. I said, I don't know what you are preaching about. But I want you to preach about the right thing. There's a hell is real. There's a real place where people who die and don't know God go straight into. I don't know what the rich man did that made him go straight into hell. But I know he didn't know God. And he was arguing all the time. And he argued even when he was in hell. And tonight I tell you, I don't know who you are. But I want to speak to people who call themselves believers. Christianity is not just a song. It's not just about singing nice songs about how God has loved us. If you knew the the cure to cancer and you kept it to yourself, we would only call you a wicked person. If you didn't do all that you could to share with other people how they can be healed and how they could be cured, we would only call you an evil and a wicked person. And when the church of God has this great salvation and we keep it to ourselves and we don't tell the world, We don't sacrifice to warn people. We don't pray for them. Because they are bound by the God of this world. Then we are are not good people. Because we didn't tell them. We didn't tell them about Jesus. There are people who die and go to hell every day. And they wish, you know, they were with you, but you didn't open your mouth. You said, oh, you know, it's not not good to push your religion on people. It's not good. It's not good to, to, to interrupt when people are, you know, it's not good to speak. It's not good to, you know, force. It's not. When the world is forcing on us every evil, every unbelievable evil, they are, they are plastering it on to us into the, in the world. It's time for us to rise up. Did you hear me? I said it's time for us to rise up and believe the Bible. Believe the word of God. Believe that it's true. Yes, because we are men of faith. You know what Paul said? Paul said when he was about to die, he said, I've kept the faith. What he meant was that I never stopped believing. I kept on believing. I kept believing the things I believed in. I kept the faith. I ran my race. And it's time for us to keep the faith and rise up and do something. You can't say you believe when you do nothing. You can't say you believe when you... Show me your faith by your actions. Show me that you really believe in heaven and hell. You really believe in Jesus. By winning not only Rockhampton, but the whole of Australia for Jesus. A fire can come from just this church and change the whole of Australia. It's possible. It's possible. So tonight... I want you to understand John 3:16 God's great love for us was really so that we would not perish but have everlasting life that was why he loved us to save us from perishing and from being destroyed and so that we would have everlasting life and that's the love that Jesus has for you and that's the love that he has for me you know I don't know how to say thank you to Jesus Andre Crouch has a song, how can I say thanks for all the things that you've done for me, things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. No angel can say thank you for you. You have to say thank you for yourself. Voices of angels will never know how to say thank you. I don't know how to say thank you to the Lord. That's why I gave my life to him. To serve him. Yes. I gave my life to him. I say, Lord, I give you my life. I give you my soul. I give you my heart. I give you my days. Because I don't know what to give you. I don't know how to say thank you. I can't write a letter to you. I can't give you a card. I can't give you money. I can't do anything. I want to give you my heart and my life. That's how I... No, I don't know how. I hope it's okay to say thank you by by giving myself to him. 
And I wish you would also be grateful for your salvation by giving. You see, God, God, your money is not that important. It is yourself. And to even, you wouldn't even open your mouth <laughs> to speak to somebody. We wouldn't organize ourselves, humble ourselves, allow ourselves to be rejected a thousand times. It doesn't matter. To rise up and pray. Pray for people to be saved. Pray for people to know Jesus. Yes, that's the call of God. That's, that's, that's the passion that we need. The passion, the passion to believe in Jesus and believe in his very words. That he is the son of God. There's no equal. There's no rival. There's no words like the words of Jesus. There are no equal words to the words of Jesus. There's no parallel. There's no rival. There's nothing that compares with Jesus and his words. That's what we were singing. And these words, I tell you, they are the words of Jesus. Yes. It's him that is, we are listening to. So today I want to encourage everybody here. I want to encourage you to, to love God. I want to encourage you to believe in what you believe. <laughs> believe in the things you are singing. <laughs> and do something. <laughs> do something to help somebody. When you hear how people are, are suffering and, 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 and dying and going to hell. You know, your heart must be moved to follow Jesus and to serve him for the rest of your life. Stand to your feet, please.